The examiner will then come back to you and say, well, tell me a little bit about the other two that you've ruled out, the other two causes of jaundice. Tell me a little bit about hemolytic jaundice in your own words very briefly. You told the examiner that is just excessive breakdown of red blood cells. Because bilirubin, as we've discussed, the name we give to this yellow stuff comes largely from breakdown of red blood cells and that of hemoglobin. Hemolytic jaundice is never severe. Hemolytic jaundice is always mild. Patients are not deeply jaundiced. What they do have is signs and symptoms of anemia because that's what's causing the lesion. And if you were to check the liver function, it would be entirely normal. The problem is that the liver is overloaded with breakdown of hemoglobin. So it tries to conjugate as much of it as it can and it succeeds and it does very well and we are very grateful for it. But some of it remains unconjugated. And if you were to examine the abdomen, I know you don't examine the abdomen, but if you were to examine the abdomen, you would notice that in the upper left abdomen, the left hypochondrium is structure spleen is often enlarged, a condition we call splenomegaly, an enlarged spleen. And so, it turns out that if you were producing enormous amount of bilirubin due to red cell breakdown, the liver cannot cope and therefore tries to excrete as much of it as it can. And it's a significant fact that patients who are hemolyzing and producing lots of bilirubin actually form gallstones, which can obstruct the biliary tree. So you get grafted on signs and symptoms of obstructive joint.